right? We're going to go over some of these examples here. Um, anyway, so take a look at what we just did here. Take a look at what we described. In every one of these cases here, right, we're going to try to identify this inside function here, okay? That's your g, gx. And we're going to follow the procedure that we have already outlined on the board. If you guys forget, it's all here. It's the same process that we already went through. So the idea is to find this inside function. So based on what we've already done here, what do you guys see as the inside function? Yeah, it's right here. It's the x plus 5 here, right? So that first step is going to be you're going to let u be what? That x plus 5. Good. So that's your first step. And the second step is going to be, like we already outlined, maybe we go back up here, right? The second step is going to be, you're going to now find du dx here. So you found the inside function u. There, there's the u. We now have to differentiate u with respect to x. So if I do that, notice this, du dx, I'll go through every detail, is d dx of the u, which is going to be that x plus 5. Is that right? And then you can say by properties of derivatives, we get to differentiate. And what's the derivative of x? Isn't that going to be what? 1, and the derivative of 5 is 0. So what you guys have found here is that du dx is actually 1. All right, you guys okay with that? So we know so far du dx equals 1. Okay, what's step number 3? Put it up here. Let's see, let's see what step 3 is. Solve for, solve for what? dx. And when we solve for dx now, if we notice, right, we have, we have somewhat of a proportion here. This is du dx equals 1 over 1. Okay, du dx is 1 over 1. So how do we solve for, for dx now? Right, do you guys remember? We can do a couple of things. We can cross multiply because we have a proportion, equal ratios. And if you cross multiply, we get du equals what? dx, or we can say simply that dx is du. So notice what we mentioned earlier here, right? We solved for dx. Now, what do you think we use this here for, right? We know that, what is dx equal? That equals du. So go back to your original integral, and what do you see there? You see a dx, don't you? So what do you think you replace that dx with? You're going to replace it with what? With that du. So this portion is now going to be du. So if we look at the substitution we have to make in step four, right? Step four is going to be to make your substitution. Your integral is now going to be the square root, not of x plus 5, but of what? Of u. And your dx is no longer dx. It's now going to be what? du, because you went back here. Here's the u, and this is now du. So you can integrate this now, right? You guys remember how to integrate this? This is going to be really the integral of u to the what? 1 half power du. OK, so by the power rule again, you're going to get u to the 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1. This is an indefinite integral, so we're going to have that constant c. And then you have to remember again, what's, what's 1 half plus 1? It's really 1 half plus 2 halves, right? And so you end up again with u to the, the 3 halves over that 3 halves plus c, which you know is really going to be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, what? Plus that c. And if we simplify here, right, u to the 3 halves, just to remind you guys, we can write this as, like we said the other day, right, this is u times u to the what? 1 half plus c, which will be 2 thirds u 
square root of u plus c. So we're almost done. We just simplified the radical. Remember, we wrote that radical here as a mixed number. This is 1 and 1 half. Okay, that's what 3 halves is. And this is kind of your solution here. But go back to the original question. Right? What do you guys notice? This is an integral in terms of x, isn't it? This is, this is the square root of x plus 5 dx. So our answer has to be in terms of what? x. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to use this fact. We use the fact that u equals what? x plus 5. And that's going to go back down here and over here. So we replace this u simply with x plus 5. That's the same u. So here's our final answer in terms of x. This will be 2 thirds x plus 5 times the square root of x plus 5 plus that constant c. So ladies and gentlemen, this is your first, uh, you know, your substitution uh, integral. And as you guys can see, when you do the appropriate substitution, it gives you an integral that you already know how to integrate. Okay, and that's the idea. These are all really specially chosen problems so that they'll work out with substitution. All right, you guys okay with that one? So that's why you have to find the inside function. Okay, it's just this process. So let's go down here now and take a look here. Right, so let's go over that. What's the inside function? Isn't that the function that's between the parentheses here? Is that right? So here's our inside function. So again, that first step is going to be to let u be x minus 5. That's the inside function. Okay? Second step, what do you do? du dx. Good. And, you know, sooner or later, I'm just going to start to, I won't go through all the details. I'm going to kind of, because you guys know how to do this. What's the derivative of x minus 5? Good. So this portion here is 1. Is that right? We know that already. Good. So again, we have du dx is 1 over 1. Step 3, we have to solve for dx. We have a proportion again, equal ratios, cross multiply. And you find that du equals what? dx. OK. Step 4, we have to substitute. So I can go up here and substitute. I can say this integral equals. Now remember, what did we call x minus 5? See this? u is what? x minus 5. So this portion is going to be u. But then that, that means I have u to what power now? The fourth power. Good. Don't forget, there's a power out here. That fourth power, right? And then what, what is actually um, dx here? You guys know what dx is? That's du. So now, isn't that an integral you can actually integrate? OK. You use the power rule again. So I can say this is u to the fifth power. All right, let me go back. Are you guys OK with that? u to the fifth power over 5 plus c? Are you guys ready to go that, go that route? You can do this in your head kind of now, right? And you can say, is that 1 fifth u to the fifth plus c? You can do that. But let's go back. What was u to begin with? u is what? So we're going to have to replace this u here with x minus 5. So my final answer in terms of x will be x minus 5 to the fifth power plus what? c. So here's another u substitution question. All right, pretty good. Anybody have any questions on this one here? No? OK. All right, let's go to the next one here. Take a look. What's your inside function here? 3x plus 2. It's between the parentheses. Is that right? And um, just to remind you, you got an outside power here. Let's put it in green here. That's the 11th power. So we, what you would have to do without use substitution is use FOIL. 
you'd have to expand that. Okay, you'd have to expand this, and that would take probably a very long time. Is that right? Okay, let's try to get comfortable here. Okay. So first step again, step one, you're going to let u be 3x plus 2. Step two, differentiate u with respect to x. So I'm still d dx of 3x plus 2. And by now, you guys should know what these are. This is what? 3. three. Okay. Step three, since we know du dx is 3, which is 3 over 1, we can again cross multiply, and we'll end up with here du is 3 dx. Now remember, what are we supposed to solve for? We solve for dx. Remember this? This is about solving for d dx. So we're going to have to do something more here, right? We have to divide both sides now by 3. So you end up with d over, du over 3 will simply become dx. And so we solve for dx. This is going to go right in here. So here's what we get by substitution. u to the what power? 11th power. What is dx now? du over 3. So don't forget now, you're going to pull out your constant, right? So this integral is going to be 1 third now, u to the 11th power, du. So you're doing all this work so that you can actually integrate this now. So notice, isn't this now something you guys can integrate? Right? In other words, I'm focusing on this now, this integral. So what would you guys use here? You're going to use what again? Yeah. Power rule. u to the 12th over 12th plus c, which gives you 1 over 36, u to the 12th plus 1 third plus c, because yes, you will actually di uh, distribute, right? But you already know, what is 1 third c? What is 1 third of a constant? Constant. Yep. So I could just put constant there. The last step is to remember what u was. So you go back here. u was 3x plus 2. So since u was 3x plus 2, right, I replaced this u with what? 3x plus 2. And so now my final answer is going to be 1 over 36, 3x plus 2 to the 12th power plus our constant c. You guys okay with that? All right. What do you guys think? Is that pretty good technique? Isn't that pretty fantastic? Did you guys, what are you going to be doing over Thanksgiving? You're going to be working on what? You substitution, All right? I want to see some gravy on those uh, homework <laughs> questions. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Is that pretty clear? Can you guys see that there? I don't have my glasses. Where are my glasses? Oh, here they are. I know. Did you guys see that? You guys can see it. All right. We're going to get a nice U sub under our belt here. Okay. Ah, finally a trig integral. All right. Remember, what's the inside function? Is that 2x? So you say, OK, u has to be 2x. Good. Second step, differentiate u with respect to x, which is really the derivative of 2x. And what does that equal? This is 2. Is that right? That derivative is 2. So I get du dx is 2. Step 3. 
solve for dx. So du dx becomes 2 over 1. And here we go. We get to cross what? Multiply. So we're going to get, when we cross multiply now, um, I guess we'll have to put it all up here. Or no, let's see what we got. We got some space. D will be 2 dx. But recall, we have to solve for dx. We've got to get this dx by itself, right? So we're going to have to divide by 2 to get cancellation. And now we do have what we need here, right? We have what? du over 2 will be our dx. So we are now ready to do the last, uh, we're, we're now ready to substitute, right? So the fourth step was, again, substitute. So go back here. u was 2x. So all that means is this is going to be u. So I have to integrate sine u. And we know that dx is, what's our dx? dx is du over 2 here. So we're going to put this as du over 2. So don't forget, there's a constant here. We pull out the constant. So we're going to really integrate 1 half sine u du. Okay, so du, du over 2 is dx, or we can say here that dx was du over 2. All right, now let's, let's do this integration. What's the antiderivative of sine? Is that negative cosine? Plus that C, take a look. All we're doing now is, maybe we should change that color, this integration here. This is the antiderivative. So when you distribute again, you end up with minus 1 half cosine u plus 1 half times that constant. You might say, can I just put a constant? Yes. And then, what do we know about u? u is really what? So replace my u with 2x minus 1 half cosine 2x plus that constant c. So there's your answer here. So this is the process of u substitution. All right, let's go to the next one here. Okay, you got the integrate cosine pi x. Now, what's the inside function? Oops, I already highlighted it. What is it? Okay, pi x. So we're going to say u here is pi x. Do you guys want me to still write down the steps that way? One, two, three, like that? Okay, second step du dx is d dx of pi x. Remember, pi is a constant. It's not a variable. So the derivative is just pi. OK, so you're going to end up here with du dx becomes pi over 1. And again, we get to cross multiply. So we get du will be pi dx. So remember, step three, we solve for dx. So if du is pi dx, we have to divide both sides by, by pi. So at this point, you're going to get du over pi going to be dx. So we're going to use this u and du over pi dx. All right, let's substitute here. This is u, and this is what? du over 
pi. So let's go back and maybe do it a little bit. Here's my substitution here. Okay, the new integral becomes then, this will be integration cosine u du over pi. So we're going to get to pull out our what? Pi now. So this will equal 1 over pi integral cosine u du. Okay, so we're now going to have to do a couple of things here. We're going to have to what? We have to focus on this integral. I don't know. Yeah. So, what's the antiderivative of cosine? Isn't it just sine? So, 1 over pi, this would be sine u plus c. Yes, you're going to distribute. And you guys know we can simply replace this constant with our, our one, 1 over pi times c can get replaced with just c. And then we remember what is really u here, pi x. 1 over pi, the integral of sine pi x. Oops. This is our answer. We don't have to integrate again. There we go. So what's this technique known as? you guys remember? It's U substitution or substitution for short. OK. What's the inside function here? If you get secant squared of 1 fourth x, what's that inside function? That's 1 fourth x. So we're going to say here u equals 1 fourth x. That's my first step. Second step, differentiate u with respect to x. So d dx, 1 fourth x. Now what's that derivative? That's 1 fourth. So du dx becomes 1 fourth. Okay. All right. Third step. What do you guys do with the, what do you guys do on the third step again? Yeah, you're going to solve for x. So, we have a proportion. We cross multiply. And that means we get 4 du is dx, right? So, remember we're going to solve for dx. Now, what do you guys do? Anybody know? Did we solve for dx? Yes. Looks like we did. OK. Step four, we what? We substitute. So for this dx, what do I replace it with? 4du. So I'm going to get the integral now of secant squared u, 4du. What do I do with the constant now here, this constant? We pull it out, so we get 4 integral secant squared u du, OK? So notice your constant is outside. Now, I just have to integrate here secant squared. So what's the integral of secant squared? Good. Or I should say, what's that antiderivative, right? Let's think. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the antiderivative of secant squared is going to be what? Tangent. OK, and yes, do we have to distribute? We do. And this portion here is going to be just a constant c, right? And then let's remember. What is our u to begin with? This was u. 1 fourth what? x. So your final answer is going to be 4 tangent 1 fourth x plus c.
All right, you guys okay with that one? Okay, now it's going to get a little interesting here. Let's be careful with what we're looking at, okay? We need an inside function. Is that right? So all these examples relied on the fact that we had an inside function. So what do you think or what have, what have we been saying? What have we been using as that inside function? Do you guys remember? You look, yeah, well, whatever, whatever was under the radical, and you notice what's under this radical here? 2x squared plus 5. So let's, con let's go with that, okay? So I'm going to say step one, we're going to have to let u be 2x squared plus what? Plus 5. Are you guys okay with that one? Okay, and then be careful here. I just want to point out to you guys that, let's find uh, maybe green. This is actually a cube root, isn't it? So there's an index there. That's a cube root. That's not, that's not the power for the x. So I just want to make that clear to you guys. So OK, we got that u now. What was the second step again? Differentiate u with respect to what? x. So I have to differentiate 2x squared plus 5. Now, how good are you guys with derivatives? Hopefully by now you guys can do these in your sleep, right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You can say, oh, do I have to go through those properties? Well, if I were you, I'd review them. Okay, so you end up here with what? That's going to be 2x. This will be a constant. So we know that the derivative is what? 4x. You guys remember that? So, okay, step three since we know du dx is 4x, and that's over 1, we're going to solve for what? For dx. Right? You've got, again, equal ratios of proportion. Cross multiply. So we'll have du is 4x dx, and then what do you do? We didn't solve for, yeah, we didn't solve for dx. That looks like 4x, 4x. <laughs> okay, divide by 4x. You guys see what I'm saying? My 4s look like d's. So let's do this. du, that's 4. 4, oops. And that's my dx. So I have everything to, to substitute now, right? Because my dx here is going to be, here's the dx. It's going to be du over what? This is du over 4x. And then what is u? u is right here. Right? 2x squared plus 5 is my u. So I'm going to replace this here. This is... This is going to be u now. So let's take a real close look at what we have. We have the integral of, don't forget, what's over here? You guys see a term here? There's an x there. So write down your x, because it's there. It didn't go away. You didn't substitute anything with that x, did you? So you see an x. This is going to be the cube root of what? u, and then we have a du over 4x, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you guys okay with that? So then you might say, well, what is, what, how does this affect everything? Well, a couple of things. Um, these problems are all specially chosen, ladies and gentlemen, so that when you do u substitution, you end up with an integral in terms of u. So I want to remark and say, you can't just integrate anything you see in your life. There's a technique you have to use to evaluate that. And so this was set up so that this happens, that your x will what? Cancel. All right, so I want to make you guys uh, completely aware of that issue, that your x's will go away 
and you still have the constant. So you have what here? This will be what? One fourth the integral of cube root of u du. Now remember, what's the cube root? That's u to the one third. So we can now use power rule. This is u to the one third plus one over one third plus one, and don't forget to add your constant. So you're going to have to do some arithmetic now. One third plus one, isn't that three thirds? Ain't that three thirds? So you get one fourth times u to the four thirds divided by four thirds plus this constant. I'll give you every detail. Yes, you're going to distribute, but before, maybe we should do this. This is one fourth. Don't we write this as three fourths? Don't we multiply by the reciprocal? Whenever you divide, go back here. Whenever you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. And then we're going to get plus what? Plus c here. So yes, when you distribute now, we're going to get 3 over what? 16. u to the 4 thirds power plus 1 fourth c. Right? Because here's what we did. Distribute here. This is your constant. And then at this point, you have a choice here. You know, you could leave your answer somewhat like this. You can say, can I, well, it's not completely done, but here's my point. Aren't you going to have to simplify, well, don't you have to simplify your power here? Isn't that four-thirds? What's your four-thirds? How do you write four-thirds again? That one and what? Right? Remember we worked on that? So here's what you guys get. This is a very good way of simplifying radicals. Okay, so you get now, this will be u, and this is times u to the one-third now, and then here's your constant c. So you have 3 over 16 u cube root of u plus c. All right, but we're not done because what do we need? What is u? All right, u here is 2x squared plus 5. So I'm going to have to replace this u here with 2x squared plus what? 5. And then that's the same u. So your final answer in back of the book will be 3 over 16, 2x squared plus 5, times the cube root of what? 2x squared plus 5, plus that constant c. Okay, you guys okay with that? So they're starting to kick up your integrals here. Okay, that's, that's called kicking up. Yes? Wait, what happened to C? Uh, the one, over one fourth C? Yeah, yeah. Um, because C is a constant, right? You, you just call it, and that's just like saying, it's a fancy way of saying number. And so if I said to you, guess what? You have one fourth of a number. One fourth of a number, again, is going to be a number. So it's not like it's a variable. You say one fourth x, and now it's just x. No, that's, that's not it. They're just generalizing this and saying, well, that's just a constant. Um, it's like I told you guys, when I was a student, I got so OCD about this. I used to not like to put c. I would put another constant d. And if it makes you feel better, put another constant d until after a while. You go, you know what? Every time I look back at the book, they changed it to C. I'm good with this. But that's what I had to go through. Because I didn't really like the fact that I can change one-fourth of a constant and call it a constant again. It's a very unnatural feeling. Because it goes against the algebra that we learned. It's like, where does it go? Yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, one-fourth of a number is, is one-fourth of a number. You don't just say number, really. But that's what they're doing. So, I mean, that's how I handled that issue personally, is by putting another capital letter, like D. So at the end, I might have gotten down to E, F, G, you know, all these constants everywhere. But, um, but yeah, that's something you could do. But it's just one-fourth of a constant being a constant. And, I, you know, I recommend this, this process I'm showing you, you know, making such a big deal about it because 
you know, when you integrate in other courses, when you go to Calculus 2 and Calculus 3, a lot of times the integrals aren't going to be, um, well, a lot of times I'm going to say the integrals are going to involve U substitution. So sometimes students go, go into a Calculus 2 or 3 course and they don't know how to integrate by U substitution. So already on the first day, they got a problem. You guys know what I mean? So this is why I did what I did and how we did it. We started on antiderivatives, hopefully did some homework way back then, and then, you know, the uh, oh, indefinite integrals and then the definite integrals and, and now U sub and we'll see error between curves and volume and all that nice stuff. But they're going to involve, um, you know, U sub. So, so really take this serious because like when I teach that Calculus 2 course and other, all the other instructors, they don't even go over U sub. They expect you to know how to do it. You know, so so you, it's a big deal. You know, so I'm gonna. That's why I want to make sure we we get a good dose of U sub. Okay, because then in calculus two you'll be good to go. What's your inside function? Are you guys tired of doing these by now? You say, oh, Mr. Judge, I think I could. I understand this. What do you think? How about if we take some shortcuts? Can you tell me which du dx? Three, good. Solve for dx, is that right? So remember, when you solve for dx, you have, again, here a, a proportion. Cross multiply. And you'll get du equals 3 dx. Divide by 3, and we get du over 3 is dx. So that's what we're looking for, right? So this dx here is replaced with du over 3. So this integral becomes 1 over u squared, and then that's du over 3. Here's your constant 3 that you pull out. So we get 1 third integral of 1 over u squared du. And do you guys remember, how do you actually integrate this? You need to change this. Yeah, you have to write this as what? u to the minus 2, and then use your power rule. So you get 1 third. Uh, what's negative 2 plus 1? Negative 1. So we put negative 1, negative 1, and add your constant. So you get now this 1 third negative 1 over u plus that constant. So just remember, what do you do with this? Distribute negative 1 over 3u plus 1 third c. What's 1 third of the constant? Oh, we don't want to call it c. We're going to call it maybe what? d. No big deal. And so this will be negative 1 third u plus what? Plus d here. Is that right? Oh, oh, the u's in the wrong spot. But what is u? u is 3x minus 7. So you've got to replace this u with 3x minus 7. So I end up with a negative. Let's, let's be consistent. Let's change this to black. 1 over 3, 3x minus 7. Let's kind of write this. Plus that constant. And if you like, I mean, you could leave it like this, or you can write it as, uh, I guess you can say, negative 1 over, what is that, 9x minus 21 plus our constant c or d, whatever you choose. So this is a u substitution process.
So now again, if you guys notice, we have one that looks like um, some of the ones we wrote on the board, right? So we have to identify the inside function. Pi x, pi x, is that right? It's in your parentheses of your trig functions. That's, your, that's the inside. That's the g in composition of functions. Step one, u is 4 pi x. Step two, du dx becomes d dx of 4 pi x. What's that derivative? It's 4 pi. Don't forget to put that over once because you're going to end up doing step three, right? Or we can do it this way. Let's. You guys are learning this, so. What I personally find is um, it's very helpful to be consistent with what you do when you learn a process for the first time. You know? Cross what? Multiply, because you're solving for, for dx. So this gives you now du equals 4 pi dx. Solving for dx, we have to divide both sides by 4 pi. So I'm going to end up with here du equals 4 pi, which would be dx. So make sure that's the dx. OK, there's your dx. So with u substitution now, remember u, u, the integral of secant u tangent u, and what's my dx again? du over 4 pi. So I'm going to get to pull out my constant. So we have 1 over 4 pi, the integral of secant u, tangent u du. What do you guys do here with this? You have to integrate secant tangent. You've got to find that antiderivative. So what was the antiderivative of the secant tangent? Secant. Is that secant? Secant u plus that constant c. And what do I do now with this? Distribute, right? OK. So we could do a couple of things here with this now. u here is 4 pi x. I can call this another constant, d, 1 fourth constant. Call that d if you like. Call it c if you like. You could even call it e if you like, just as long as that's just some constant, some number. And then here's what we're going to end up with, right? What's our final answer? 1 over 4 pi secant 4 pi x plus that constant. There, it, it all fits in there here. Yes? Then now, then, then that's a very good question. If they change the arguments, well, when you first learn u substitution, they're not going to do that at all. That's a very, very good question. Um, these, these, these integrals are always, you know, for u sub, they're very specially chosen. You're going to see how you get that nice cancellation. If you don't, you either did something wrong or there's another algebraic manipulation you have to do, and we'll get to those, you know, kinds of questions. But, but yeah. Um, it's a very good question. You, you're going to see some of those things in the next course, Calculus 2. And then even there, they're specially chosen as well. So we're going to change the arguments for some of those in Calculus 2 mm -hmm. for trig functions. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're first starting your career in integration, so you have a whole course coming up. You have like a whole chapter of integration techniques after this chapter in Calculus 2 course, and I have videos on all those um, techniques as well. So even if you guys don't take the course with me, um, which can happen, you know, um, I have, in, I have um, your integration techniques online already for, for I think, for most of those, those, and I'll be doing the same thing, videotaping the rest of the integration techniques. So they're going to be posted online to YouTube and my website. So you might have actually taken a look at those. And, but yeah, I'm trying to um, get my resources up for the calculus sequence, you know. And I already had that over a year ago, some of those integration techniques. Because when you teach calculus, and actually there's another substitution video I did um, online. Um, it's there. Um, and I did that one Saturday for a calculus 2 class because I knew a lot of them didn't know u sub. And they came in somehow not knowing you substitution, so we did videos there. Uh, but anyway, that's why I want to go through these in great detail, so that when you guys leave, and you, you know, if you end up taking someone else, you go, oh my God, wonderful, you have great use sub skills. Who'd you take for Calculus 1? You know. <laughs> okay, you guys know what I mean? You, you represent me now, so represent me well. That's why I'm going to go through this painfully. And I don't know how many questions I did. Anybody look at the, I don't know, I don't know if I did 30 or 40, I got no. Yeah, I get carried away. Because it is important. You see this here, this is my inside function under the radical, right? So you're gonna let u be that x plus three under that radical. Step two, by now, you guys know du dx. Could you guys just tell me that derivative by looking at it? It's what? One. Step three, we actually solve, right, for dx, cross multiplication, and that means my du is what? dx. So step four, we're going to have to substitute. And so when we substitute, my u is down here. We have this dx. It's the same dx. Now it's going to be what? du. So I get 4 over the square root of x plus 3, not times dx anymore, but times what? du, because that's what it is. We're going to pull out the constant. Okay, You pull out that constant here. 4, integral. Oh, we forgot to put the u. That's 1 over the square root of u du. And we can't integrate just yet. We have to write this as u to the what? Minus 1 half. Because we're going to have to use that power rule. Right? And so by power rule here, if you remember, you take negative 1 half plus 1 over negative 1 half plus 1. Yes, plus that c. We get 4 now. Um, u to the positive 1 half over 1 half. Is that right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You change this 1 to what? 2 over 2. And what you do now is you say, OK, that's 4 now um, times what? 2 square root of u plus c. You could distribute. We get 8 square root of u plus c. Or we can say, well, let's do the detail. Eight square root of u, maybe plus that constant d. And then don't forget what is u again. X plus three, so we replace this with x plus three. So our final answer is going to be here. Eight square root x plus three plus that constant. Now I want to know. I want to say something here to you guys that I haven't given you yet. What if they give us a U substitution question? So here's the note. Here's what you guys want to know. This was one. This was four over the square root of x plus three dx. And now they gave us limits zero to 1. 
So remember last time we're working on all these um, definite integral questions. So you might say to me, oh, because they gave us these limits now, 0 and 1, what does that mean since they gave us these limits? Okay, let's write this down. Upper limit, lower limit. This is now a what? A definite what? Integral. So you're going to have to, we're going to have to evaluate the what? Is that true? You guys with me on this? Now, in some ways, you're kind of done. Because what is this over here as your final answer? That's my what? It's the antiderivative, isn't that? It's a general form of your antiderivative. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, this is a nice continuous function over the interval. So we can actually apply this theorem, right? So we'll say by fundamental theorem of calculus part two again, we know that this is going to equal, let's put it here, this equals what? f of 1 minus f of 0. Is that true? Okay, because you have the upper limit here, the lower limit there. It's the antiderivative. So we just have to now evaluate 8 square root of x plus 3. You can say plus d, where x equals 0, x equals 1. Okay, you guys with me on this? This is the kind of stuff we did last time. So, make sure you plug in now what values here. Bless you. 1 for the first one. So this is 8, square root of 1 plus 3, plus d, okay, minus 8, square root of, now do the next one, 0. 0 plus 3 plus that d. Okay, so you're evaluating the antiderivative at the limit values and at these endpoints. So we get now 8 square root of 4 plus d. Okay, I, I'm going to get rid of my parentheses. Okay, don't forget what do you do over here though? You distribute, is that right? So this is minus 8 square root of zero, uh, 3, not 0, minus d. Because the sign here, the difference, gets applied over here when we distribute. And so if I have d minus d, my d's are what? Gone, is that right? So this is 8 times 2 minus 8 square root of 3. So your final answer is going to be really what? 16 minus 8 square root of 3. So I want to show you, this is how you can approach, you know, evaluating this definite integral for u substitution. All right, you guys okay with that one? So we can go all the way down and integrate, write our function in terms of x and evaluate the limits. But we can also do something else. So here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to erase some of this stuff because I'm going to apply the limit questions here for us. Okay, this is the limit was what? From 0 to 1. Is that right? So I want to go back up here and say this equaled 8 square root of u plus d. Right? When we integrated, this is right down here. This is what I'm focusing on. So I'm going to get rid of all of our work. Let's change the size of our eraser. And what you guys are looking at here now is this is the antiderivative of u. 
Okay, so remember, my u was x plus 3. So, here's what I want to remind you guys here. What we can do is we can change our limits. You're going to convert our limits from what? x to u. Because over here, you have x equals 0 and x is 1. So since my u here, go back, is what? x plus 3, I can convert my limits. So I'm going to convert the lower limit. You say, which one's the lower limit? You guys remember what the lower limit is? When x is 0. So if I plug in 0 here, what do I get for u? What is 0 plus 3? That's my new lower limit. I'm going to convert the upper limit when x is 1. So if I plug in 1 now for x, what's my new, what's the upper limit value going to be? What's 1 plus 3 now? 4. So that now when I apply this here, no longer x. What's the, what's the new limit now? This is all in terms of what? This is u is 3. This is u is 4. We're now going to get here 8. Well, don't, don't use the fundamental theorem of calculus. What do we write down here? Right? This will be what? f of 4 minus f of 3. Is that right? So we have 8 square root of 4 minus 8 square root of 3. We're going to apply those values here. And you know that 8 times 2, and this is going to give me now just 16 minus what? 8 square root of 3. So what I want to remark here is in u substitution, we can convert our limits. From what? X to U. And so whatever is more convenient for you really is the way to go. Whatever arithmetic is easier is how you do this. Now, um, some people like converting everything and they go forward. And that's perfectly fine. You can do that. Some people go all the way down the way I did the first time. And then they apply the limits for X. You could do that too. But... You can always go back to the original representation of u, whatever you let u be right here. And you plug in these x values. x is 0, x is 1. You get your new limit values in terms of the variable u. So that's what you can also do. Anyway, I thought, I thought I'd throw that out because that's, that shows up. So you guys notice, don't you get the same answer? Yeah, that's the point. So anyway... All right, let's do some more of these u subs. What's the inside function? Do you guys know what the inside function is? Step one, u is what? Is that 2x cubed plus 9? What's du dx? Is that just 6x squared? All right, you guys okay with that? Step three, du dx is? 6x squared over 1. We're solving for dx. Oops. Cross multiply. And we get what? du is 6x squared dx. What do you guys do now? We're solving for dx. Divide by 6x squared. Cancel. Cancel. You get what? du over 6x squared becomes dx. So here, I solve for dx. I'm going to replace that dx there. Don't forget, though, what is u? 2x cubed plus 3. So I'm going to put u down there. And here's what I end up with. I have x squared 
over cube root of u, my dx is really, what's my dx? du over 6x squared. And sure enough, was this problem specially chosen so that you have cancellation? x squared's gone, x squared's gone. Is that true? So you get to pull out your constant now. What's the constant? 6. So it's going to be, yeah, it's 1 over 6. You're right. 1 over cube root of u du 1 6 u to the minus what? 1 third. Is that true? All right, you guys okay with that one? So uh, by the power rule now, we get 1 6. Let's see if you guys can do this. Do you guys know what's negative 1 third plus 1? That's u to the 2 thirds now. Let's, let's start to show off a little bit, right? 1 6, 3 halves u to the 2 thirds plus c. Distribute. And when you distribute here, you have to remember, what's 1 6 times 3 halves? Maybe we should write it down just in case. Yes, that's 1 6 c. We can simplify here. And that 2, what do you get here? Yeah, 1 fourth. 1 fourth, u to the 2 thirds, plus a constant d, or c, whatever you choose. And now, let's go back. What was u to begin with? It's over here. u was really what? It's 2x cubed plus 9. So, 1 fourth. 2x cubed plus 9 to the 2 thirds power plus that constant d or c, whatever you choose. And then I'm going to remark here. If you're looking back at the book, you might see this. 1 fourth cube root of 2x cubed plus 9 to the second power, you're going to see plus c. Whatever you choose, C or D, doesn't matter. It's a constant. But what did they apply here? Do you guys know? They applied the definition of what? Yeah, a rational exponent. So those things, you know, you don't want to forget. I would say anything to the 2 thirds power, if you remember the definition, that's the cube root of that triangle to the second power. They just simply write this rational exponent as a radical. Okay, good. Ah, these are going to so start to get interesting now. Here's some more use of questions here. Take a look at this. We are going to kick this what? Up. So what do I mean by kick this up? You're going to look at this and you say, where's my inside function? I don't even see an inside function anymore. Is that right? The inside function, there's no inside function. Well, you could try it. You could say just x, but what will happen is you're not going to get make any progress. All right, you guys understand what I'm saying? Now, this section, these questions are all under u sub, so it means you could do it by u sub. They're specially chosen. So I'm going to point out something to you guys. I'm going to let u be by that first step, sign. And like I said, you need experience with this u sub. You need to go through this stuff. If u is sine, what's du dx? What's the derivative of sine? Isn't that cosine? Mm -hmm. So step three, S solve for dx. Cross multiply. What do you end up with? 
we get du is cosine x dx, but now I have to divide both sides by cosine. And I get cancellation, so we'll have du over cosine is dx. So notice what I did here. We need to replace that dx with what? This is now du over what? Cosine. What did I let u be? See a sign here? So that means I have the integral of not sine anymore, but u, and isn't that raised to what power here? You see the second power there? So this is u squared now. That's what you guys do. So let me show you here. That's that same power. All right? And yes, you do still have a cosine there. We didn't do That's not changed. u is sine. So cosine's still there. But dx, we know, is du over what? Cosine. cosine. So remember I said these are specially chosen so that you get this nice cancellation because here you have a function of x here. So notice we're going to cancel the cosines here. And you really now have a nice integral like what? u squared du. So wasn't that nicely, specially chosen for you guys? So here's kind of the tip, if you guys want to start to recognize this. When you have a combination of sines and cosines like that, right, you're going to have one of them to a power. All right? So the inside function is that base. So in this case, if it's sine squared, the base is sine. And what you'll probably find, hopefully, well, most likely, well, especially when you start u sub, you're going to find that the, the, the function, the other function is going to cancel. <coughs> so now you can use power rule. One third u cubed plus c. One third, what was u again? This will now be sine cubed plus c. Ah. A little bit of OCD. Put the final answer bold and black so it stands out. So that's how you handle some of those. Okay, so they come up. So I want to kick it up for you guys. Oh, what do we notice again? Something very similar. What did we just say? Let the base here. Yeah, cosine. Let that let that base be our U. So when we have u being cosine now of, of x, that's just the base. Don't put it to the third power. Okay, go through your process now. The derivative of u with respect to x, what's the derivative of cosine? Isn't that minus sine? Step three, du dx will be minus sine now over 1. And again, you use this cross what? Cross multiplication. So when we solve, looks like we get um, du is minus sine x dx. Divide both sides now by minus what? Sine. So I get du over minus sine is dx. So this dx is the same as the dx you have here. So let's, let's substitute now. So let's be careful here. This is cosine to the third power. Here's my u. So go back here. That's the power 3. So this is u to the what? Power 3. I still have the factor of sine here. It's right there. du, however, is, or dx, I should say, is du over what? Minus sine. So like I said, these are specially chosen, and you're going to get what? 
cancellation with your signs. But don't forget you have a constant here, right? Don't forget that that negative 1 is there. So since negative 1 is here, I get negative u cubed du. And we can integrate this in our sleep, right? You guys remember that? That's going to be in the minus what? u to the fourth over 4. And at this point, we don't have to distribute and go through all that detail. We can actually just put plus c, because isn't that what we always end up with? Do you guys notice that? So we just put plus c here. So this is how we kind of handle this. And this becomes now, since u was what? u is cosine, we get minus 1 fourth cosine to the fourth power x plus c. And I've been writing that in black, so I want to continue. So this is how you handle when you have sines and cosines raised to a power. You're going to have a factor of the derivative really there. They're all specially chosen. So they can change that power to 10 or 6 or 8 or 9. It still just becomes a power rule for integration with you. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? You guys okay with that? This power could be any power. Oops, undo. We can put a 7, we can put a 10, we can put a 12. It's a power rule. They can even put the square root of 1 half power. You go, what do you mean? Take a look. Here's what I'm talking about. Step one, I'm going to let u be what? u be sine. Because this will be u to the what now? One half power. Is that true? Good. So, differentiate u with respect to x. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. What's step three? Solve for dx. So we get now du is cosine x dx, which means divide both sides now by, by cosine. Here's my dx. Here's my dx. All right? My dx is du over cosine. So this would be the integral of u to the 1 half. My cosine factor is still there. And I have du over cosine. Sure enough, cancellation. So now I have a nice integral in terms of u. So I have u to the 1 half du which is a square root of u. Well, we don't have to do that because we're going to use power rule. So now by power rule, what do you guys get? u to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus that constant c, which is 2 thirds u to the what? 3 halves plus c. And again, what's my u? Go back. u is what? Sine. So I replace this with a nice sine function. So 2 thirds sine to the 3 halves plus c. Or let's note, what do you think we can write down? You guys know? I'm going to write it down this way. I'm going to show off. 2 thirds sine square root of sine plus c. Right? Because you're going back to the fact that you're going to write this here as a mixed number, 3 halves. So you get to simplify that radical. So 3 halves becomes, again, that 1 and 1 half. So right? 1 plus 1 half, or 1 and 1 half. Same thing.
What do you think? You got cosine to the 3 halves power. Right? So your u is going to be what again? Cosine. Stick 2. Du dx, derivative of cosine is minus sine. So we get now what du is minus sine x dx. Divide both sides now by what? Minus sine. So when we substitute, see this dx? This dx goes up here. It's going to be really du over minus sine. And my u here is cosine. So all together, I get u to the 3 halves sine du over minus sine. So what happens now here? Don't, don't your signs cancel? Yeah, don't forget there's a negative sign here. So I pull out that constant. Negative u to the 3 halves du. So Antiderivative. Do you guys, can you, can you add, let me ask you guys this question. Can you take 3 halves plus 1? Right? Power rule, 3 halves plus 1. 5 halves. 5 halves, right? That's going to be minus 2 fifths. You have the 5 halves plus C. And if you want, at this point, how do you write 5 halves as a mixed number? Is it 2 and 1 half? So negative 2 fifths u squared times u to the 1 half, right? So at this point, we can go back and take a look. What is u anyway? u is what? Cosine x. So for my u's, I replace it with what? Cosine x. Final answer. Negative 2 fifths. Cosine squared. Square root. Cosine x plus c. Some nice u substitution. All right, let's try this here. Let's see what we get now. What do you guys think you should be? Yeah, what should you be here now? 4 minus x squared? All right. So I'm just kind of curious, why would you want u to be 4 minus x squared? Because you have the square root in the fifth power, is that right? You may be wrong with what you let u be. Go through the process and find out. And um, it's going to turn out here, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll remark about this in, in the future. So you're going to try that, and so yes, this will be my u, right? So you get u to the fifth. So the second step, we're going to have to differentiate u with respect to x. Isn't that minus 2x now? Third step, solve for dx. We get what? dx is du over what? Negative 2x. I replace that dx right here dx would be du over minus 2x. So that's du 
over minus 2x. But don't forget, you have what? You have that x factor. So x is there. u to the fifth power is there. g over minus what? 2x is there. So what do you think is going to happen with this x? Didn't we say they're specially chosen? Your constant is still here. It's negative 2. So I'm going to bring out the constant here. And it's actually negative 1 half because it's in the denominator position. So now we have a nice power rule integral to perform. OK, you guys OK with that? So negative 1 half u to the 6 over 6 plus what? c, which will be negative 1 twelfth u to the 6 plus c. What do you replace this u with? 4 minus what? x squared. So as a final answer, here's what you get. Negative 1 twelfth, 4 minus x squared to the 6th power plus that c. So what do you guys think? You're getting used to use substitution now? So you know, you're going to have some uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, and a side of use substitution? I hope. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of how it used to work. I know when I was a student, that's how it worked. My mom would have to say, Daniel, um, you know, put your books away. You know, eat some turkey or something, right? And I'd have to say, Mom, you don't understand. You, know, you don't get it, Mom. I have to do this. It's not that I want to do it. It's I have to do it. See, unfortunately, being an adult, you know what that really means? I tell this to my daughter all the time. Being an adult means doing what you have to do, not what you want to do. And even now, as an adult, that, that statement I just gave you translates for the rest of your life. It's not what you ha want to do. It's what you have to do. Oh, man. That's pretty deep. <laughs> it's like when you buy things, you don't realize we're such consumers, right? You buy what you need, not what you want. That's a really important thing to remember. You buy what you need, not what you want. Because I want everything. <laughs> So if I bought everything, I'd have a real problem because I want everything. So you always have to ask that whenever you make a purchase, right? Is it what I need or is it what I want? Think about that. Same thing for homework. It's not that you want to do it. It's that you what? You have to do it. You need to do it. You know, I'd rather watch Netflix. It's what I want to do, but this is what I have to do. Anyway, what do you think our u is going to be here? What's under that radical? Remember, isn't that the pattern so far? Let u is x to the fourth minus 6. du dx is 4x cubed. Is that right? Step 3. Solve for dx. So I solve for dx, I get what? du is 4x cubed dx. Okay, so you're going to replace this here, this dx, with what? du 4x cubed. So I replace that dx. du over 4x cubed. 
So this integral becomes, don't forget though, you're going to start to see these factors left. There's a 2x cubed here. u to the 1 half, du over what? 4x cubed. So what happens with the x cubes again? Notice again, they what? They cancel. But you have some constants. 2 and 4, that makes this what? 1 half. So you get 1 half integral u to the 1 half du. 1 half, and at this point you guys know 1 half plus 1, isn't that 3 halves? One half, now multiply that by two thirds. Okay, and we get now what? One third u to the three halves plus c. And I'm always on the lookout where I go, okay, three halves. Oh, that's one and one half as a mixed number. So, one third u times u to the one half plus that c. And now I just have to go back and remember what, what u was. It's x to the fourth minus 6, yeah. Bless you. Bless you. And there's that answer here. You know, I mean, I, I would accept u to the 3 halves as an answer. I mean, uh, let me re rephrase that. I would accept the x to the 4th minus 6 to the 3 halves, not u to the 3 halves, right? Because if they ask you to integrate in terms of x, you want your answer in terms of x. I understand your statement. Your statement is, do I have to simplify my radical? Well, some books you're going to see the answer to that question is no. You're going to see, here's the question. Can I write this this way? The answer is yes, you can. I mean, I'll write it that way at times, too. You might say, well, I've been simplifying all these uh, radicals. Well, and if you look at some books and some answers, they'll do that. And a lot of times students will ask the question, how did they get that? I don't understand. Or they think they did something wrong. And so they don't realize, no, they just simplified. So I, I, I actually do both. Um, but that's your answer. Yeah, that's the answer. Either would be fine. I'm OK with it. I wouldn't mark it wrong. But I want to see an answer in terms of what variable? X, not you. So don't go up here and stop right here. Some people stop there. You'll only get partial credit. But if you go all the way, you're going to get what? Full credit. But short answer is it's okay. But you know, don't look, don't look at it like um, you know. Just don't get confused if you do all this work and you're correct, and you go, oh my God, they wrote it this way. Where did that come from? That's where it came from. You know. And it's going to start to get more interesting than it is now. If I look at 18, yeah, okay, we've got one more boring question. That, you guys are bored on this yet? Am I the only one? <laughs> one, u is what? x to the fifth plus three. So this is going to be my u now, right? OK, du dx is 5x to the fourth. I got to solve for dx. So I get du is 5x to the fourth dx. Divide by that. You get some nice cancellation. dx, dx. This is du over what? 5x to the fourth. So I have this 
3x to the fourth term. Don't forget, that's still there. But you do have u to the 12th, and we have du over 5x to the fourth. So sure enough, I get cancellation. They were very thoughtful of the question. Constant, constant. What's my new constant that comes out? That's 3 fifths. u to the 12 du. 3 fifths. u to the 13 over what? 13 plus that c. So we get now 3 u to the 13 over, what's 5 times 13? Is that 65? OK, don't forget to add your constant. So I'll say this is 3 over 65 u to the 13th plus my c now. And you go back and you say, my u here was really x to the fifth power plus 3. So 3, 65, x to the fifth power plus 3. That's raised to the 13th power. And again, I'm OCD. What do we need to put this in? Black. Final answer. Yeah. Yeah, do I make a mistake? Okay. What's that? Let's go back. 5x to the 4th. 3 over 5th. <coughs> 3 over 5th. Uh, 365. Ooh, it's a little dyslexia. I wonder if you could develop dyslexia in your old age. Did you guys notice that? Is that my first mistake today? Darn it. I used to be able to go a whole semester in all my classes and not make a single mistake. Now I can't go more than an hour. <laughs> It's a, it's a combination. In fact, I was, I'm thinking about this as I'm writing. Maybe this is why I made the mistake. I'm thinking about this as I'm writing it down. All right, I have the sleep apnea, and it's hard to sleep sometimes. So I notice you do suffer. Oh my god, it's such a killer. You suffer badly because of it. So I think it's memory. It's um, a lot of different things, you know, a lot of issues. So it's always important for me to get some good sleep, even with sleep apnea. You know, it's horrible. I don't recommend you get it, <laughs> okay? I don't recommend it because it's a killer. So I'm blaming it on my sleep apnea, you know. Anyway, hopefully we get a nice, interesting question finally. All right, this is a little bit interesting. You guys remember our u is going to be the inside function again, right? And it's been what's in the parentheses. <laughs> so here's a good hint. What's in my parentheses? x squared plus what? 2x. Oh, we're going to let that be u. Step two will be du dx, which is 2x plus 2. So we have to solve for dx. So du over dx, 2x plus 2 over 1. Cross what? Cross multiply. DU becomes 2x plus 2 times dx. Now divide both sides by 2x plus 2. Cancellation. DU over 2x plus 2 becomes dx. Now go back and do what again? Here's my dx. My dx is here. So du over 2x plus 2. My u is down there. And don't forget, in the denominator, you have a power here. What's that power? That's 3. So this integral is going to be now x plus 1 over u to the third power times du over 2x plus 2.
So you might look at this and you might say, wait a minute, Mr. Judge, I thought these problems are specially chosen so I get cancellation. And all of a sudden, I don't, I don't have a X plus one on top and bottom. I got an X plus one on top, but not on bottom. What's the deal here? Because isn't this term left under? Isn't that term left? It's right here. So what do you guys think you're going to have to do here? Yeah, I see this down here. This is 2 times x plus 1. So sure enough, it looks like they're going to have us remember a little bit of algebra here. Now we get cancellation. Is that right? So we're going to pull out the what? The constant 2, and you get what now? 1 half integral. 1 over u cubed du, or 1 half integral u to the minus 3 du. So what do we do now with this? This is what? Do you guys know what negative 3 plus 1 is? Negative Good. Put that negative 2 over negative 2 plus c. So notice this antiderivative. We just have to know a little bit of arithmetic. Now altogether, we have what? Yeah, let's be careful here. I want to, you're multiplying these fractions, right? So you get negative one-fourth, but this is now u squared down here. Is that true? Because you have here that base to a negative power. That means put me in the denominator with a positive power. And then our u, again, go back here. Our u is going to be what? x squared plus 2x. So final answer, we've been putting in black all day long. Negative 1 over 4 x squared plus 2x squared plus our constant c. Okay. Ah, this is a tricky one. Very tricky. What do you guys think? Mm. What do you think you should be here? Give you guys a big hint. What should our U be? What's under the radical? I'm not under the radical. I apologize. What's in the parentheses? Isn't that kind of a hint? What do you guys think? Is that a hint? But what is this x square root of x? Isn't that x to the first power, x to the 1 half? Is that x to the 3 halves power? So that's my u. Is that right? OK, second step. du dx is 3 halves x to the, OK, 3 halves minus 1. du dx will be 3 halves x to the 1 half, because what do you see here? 2 over 2. So what's going to be step 3 here? we got to get this light back on. What's step 3, you guys think? We're going to solve for dx. So that's 3 square root of x over 2, right? We're going to do what? Cross multiply. So what that gives you now is 2 du is 3 square root of x dx. Solving for dx, divide by 3 square root of x. I get cancellation here and here. This is going to be our what? This is dx here. So let's go up right up here here. Uh, right up here, sorry. 2 du, 3 square root of x, is dx. Here's my dx. Here's my dx. 2 du over 3 square root of x. Now, don't forget here. We have this square root of x here. Is that right? 
So I'm going to have that square root of x cosine now of u, this is my u, 2 du over 3 square root of x. So do you guys get cancellation now? Gone. Gone. Don't forget you have some what? Some constants here, 2 and 3. So I'm going to pull those constants out. 2 thirds integral cosine of u du. So what's the antiderivative of cosine now? Sine u plus that c. And now we just go back and remember u is x squared of x. So replace this with x squared of x. So here's what we get. 2 thirds sine x squared of x plus c. There you go. So that's 21, I mean 20. If you guys want to go look at this, I'm going to say we could do this really fast too. See that x squared, sine of x squared? What's this? U is x squared. What's du dx? 2x. Step 3, du dx, du dx is 2x, right? So... Cancel, cross multiply because you're solving for dx. So I get du is 2x dx, divide by 2x, du over that 2x is dx. That's my dx, that goes here. So we get du over 2x, this is u. Don't forget, we already have a factor x there. So this will be that x sine u du over 2x. Press out that x. Don't forget you have a constant. 2, here you go. 1 half integral sine u du. What's the antiderivative of sine? Derivative of cosine is minus sine, so that's minus what? Minus cosine u plus c, which is minus one half cosine u plus c. And we go back and say u is x squared. Replace u with that x squared minus one half cosine x squared plus c. Ah, finally, maybe we have something interesting here. So it took us all this time to get to an interesting question. Whew. Good, I wanted to get to this one. I wanted to get to all of these. These are, these are going to be nice. This is u substitution still. So go back and remember what have we been seeing, what have we been saying since the beginning? You want your, you want to find the inside function. You want that u. And the inside function has been whatever's been in the argument of your trick functions in the parentheses, the argument of your square roots under the radical or your cube roots. Whatever was in that parentheses, I guess, right? So in this case now, notice you have what? Let me be very careful here. You see this here? Your first step, we got u is what? 
x plus 5. Is that true? So I'm going to say go through your process here. And then step 2, you might say, okay, what do I do? I get du what? dx is 1. Step 3, solve for dx. 1 over 1. Cross multiply, and you find out that du is dx. So you're now going to do your what? Your substitution. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So let's go substitute. My u is down there. But don't forget you have a fourth power here. Okay? We already have the dx. It's right here. It's du. So when I start to substitute, I got du here. I get the integral here of what? x squared over what? You have the fourth power, and then I got a du. And then, what do you guys do here? Anybody know? You might say to me, here's the first time where you did not get any cancellation. So I'm going to put this in red. You're going to say, wait a minute. No what? No cancellation. Anyway. No cancellation. You say, Mr. Judge has been promising me cancellation here. Well, I kicked this up a level. We're going to keep kicking this up, kicking it up until you guys get great, right? Now you might say, what do I do here? Well, you certainly need what? We need an x squared, don't we? We don't have x squared. Go back to this step here. Go back here. Since u is x plus 5, how can we get an x squared? x equals minus 5? Yeah. Solve for x. In other words, u minus 5 is x because you subtracted 5 from both sides, right? And then now what do you think you want to do now? Square. Yeah, square the left side and the what? Right side. right side. So you end up with the statement that x squared is u minus 5 to the second po power, excuse me. <coughs> Apologize. You're going to have to use a little bit of algebra. You have to use FOIL. So you get something like this. x squared equals u squared minus 10u plus 25. So here is what we get to replace with what? The x squared now. So your integral is going to be now u squared minus 10u plus 25 divided by u to the fourth du. And now we distribute. You say, what do you mean we distribute? Here's what we do. u squared over u to the fourth minus 10u over u to the fourth plus 25 over u to the fourth. That's du. So simplify. 1 over u squared minus 10 over u cubed plus 25 over u to the fourth. OK? That's the du. And then you're going to use your properties of integration, properties of integrals. So 1 over u squared minus 10. Oops, don't forget the du's. Technically, I haven't made a mistake, if, right? Unless I catch it, if I catch it myself. 1 over u cubed du plus 25 over what? 1 over u to the fourth du. Now, since I'm going to be using my power rule, u to the minus 2 du minus 10 u to the minus 3 du plus 25 u to the minus 4 du. 
So I get to use my power rule three times. So take a look. I just want to point out to you how many integrals you guys see here. Let's change these colors here. I got one. <laughs> I got two. I don't know what color here. And I got three of these integrals. Okay, so don't forget, you also have some constants here. So we have constants and we got our signs anyway. We just have to know how to add numbers with one. So we get u to the what? Minus first power over negative one, minus 10, u to the minus two power over negative two, plus 25, u to the minus third power over negative three, plus a constant. So if you can add with one, you've got these values. Is that right? OK, you guys with me on this? Right? What did I just do? I added 1 to every one of those powers, and it divided also by the answer. So that's where I'm using power rule here. Now, by properties of exponentials, negative 1 over u plus 5 over u squared minus 25 over 3u cubed plus that constant c. And then we just replace u with what it was. What was u again? X plus, x plus 5, right there. So wherever there's a u, replace it with x plus 5. So negative 1 over x plus 5 plus 5 over x plus 5 squared minus 25 over 3 times x plus 5 cubed plus your c. All right, so now it's getting a little bit interesting. Okay, you guys know what I mean? This is getting interesting now for us. We're going to be kicking this up. We're going to be probably running into some questions that allow us to do some algebra. All right, so if you didn't get cancellation there, you're probably going to have to use a little bit more algebra here. Okay, you guys okay with that? Let's see about this one. This is another famous one. What do you think our u should be here? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Question. Oh, taking that note. Yeah. I'm going to post this online for you guys again. Like I said, I'm going to put this stuff online. I'm going to finish one more question, and then we're going to talk about a few things. So let's get, get one more in, OK? Then, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about a few things. I'll post these things online for you. You know, notes and questions here. So. And I probably have to show you where I'm going to do it. So should we do that? Uh, yes, let's sneak one more in. How about this? What should you be? Ooh, Square root of x. Is that right? Is that my argument for the trig function? OK. Step one. And let u be square root of x, which is x to the 1 half. Step two. du dx is. Remember I told you guys this integral shows up a lot, so get, get used to it. Right, remember this one? It's going to show up. Solve for dx. So we cross multiply. So I guess I get what? 2 square root of x du is dx, and notice I solve for dx right here. So this portion will be 2 square root of x, what? du. And then this is my u. OK, so this integral is going to be secant squared u over the square root of x times 2 square root of x du. What happens with these radicals? They're gone. Don't forget, there's a constant. So I pull out my constant. 2 times the integral of secant squared u du. OK, what's the integral of secant squared? Tangent u plus c. So I go back now, and I say, OK, what was u? Uh, u was the square root of x. So we got to replace that with the square root of x. So 2 tangent 
square root of x plus that constant c. Okay. Double check. Is that what we get? We're going to continue with our u substitution. And as before, what's under that radical, as we've seen over and over again, is going to be our u. So in this case, we'll say u is x cubed plus 1. And so now we find the du. So du dx, we get 3x squared. Step 3. du dx becomes x squared over 1. Because we're going to have to solve for dx here. right? So what we've seen earlier is that we have a proportion and we're going to solve for dx. So this means we get du equals 3x squared dx. So now we have to divide both sides here by 3x squared. We get cancellation here and you now have du over 3x squared will be dx. This is what I replaced my dx with. So you have du over 3x squared. And then don't forget, you have a term here, x to the fifth power, that's still there. So this integral becomes x to the fifth power, square root of u, du over 3x squared. And so we have some algebra to do here, meaning the x squared term and this x to the fifth power now reduces that to x cubed by properties of exponents. We have also a constant to pull out. So we're going to have now one-third the integral of x cubed now square root of u, du, where we pulled out that constant. The issue we have here is still that we have a term there in terms of the x variable. So if you go back now here, let's, let's change this. We're going to go back here to u is equal to x cubed plus 1. You have to go back to your original substitution. And since we know that u is x cubed plus 1, we could subtract 1 from both sides, and you get u minus 1 is x cubed. And so this term here, x cubed, gets replaced with u minus 1. So algebraically speaking, that's really u minus 1. So we have one third now. Instead of x cubed, we got u minus 1 times u to the 1 half du. So you still do a little bit of algebra here. We're going to distribute here. So you have one third u times u to the 1 half minus u to the 1 half du. So you end up with one-third u to the three-halves. Let's write that a little clearer. Minus u to the one-half, and that's now going to be du. So you're now going to use your properties here, and you'll have one-third u to the 3 halves du minus 1 third u to the 1 half du. We're using our integration of a difference as difference of integrals. So you get 1 third now by the power rule 
u to the 3 halves plus 1, which is u to the 5 halves, over 5 halves, minus 1 third times, now power rule, u to the 1 half, we're going to get 1 half plus 1, which will be 3 halves. Don't forget to add the constant c. So I have here 1 third times 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus 1 third times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus your constant. So now by some multiplication here, we're going to have 2 over 15 multiplying our fractions u to the 5 halves minus 2 over 9 u to the 3 halves plus that constant. And so at this point, let's pay attention here to our powers of 5 halves and 3 halves. We can write this again here as, in terms of mixed numbers, we can simplify those, um, those radicals. So 5 halves is going to be 2 and 1 half, and 3 halves is 1 and 1 half. So we can write down 2 over 15, u squared, square root of u, minus 2 ninths, u, square root of u, plus that c. And so if we go back and determine what was u to begin with, it was x cubed plus 1. So we can put 2 fifteenths x cubed plus 1 squared square root x cubed plus 1 minus 2 ninths x cubed plus 1 square root of x cubed plus 1 plus that c. And there you go. So as you can see, this particular question does involve some algebra. But I would probably like to point out to you, this is the first time we've seen this kind of situation where we're really going to have to go back and use that, that u being x cubed plus 1. Twenty-five. Again, we're going to go with what we've been doing. In that parentheses, we have the inside function. So our first step is going to be to let u be x plus 5. This is where my u will be. I need du dx, which is 1, which means du dx will be 1 over 1, and we have to solve for dx. So we're going to use our cross multiplication when we find that du is dx. So this dx gets placed in here as simply du. So what we'll get here is x squared over u cubed du. And again, we have the x squared term. So we're going to have to replace this x squared with something that it's equivalent to in terms of u. And to do that, you have to go back to this u is x plus 5. So we're going to have to find what x squared would be. So if we say u is x plus 5, we subtract 5, we get u minus 5 is the value x. And so what you do now here is you simply square both sides. And so x squared will be u minus 5 times u minus 5 which is u squared minus 10u plus 25. So this is going to be what we replace our x squared with right up here, u squared minus 10u plus 25. So let's add this here. u squared minus 10u plus 25 everything over u cubed, du.
And so you end up here with, if we do some algebra to simplify here, we're going to have u squared over u cubed minus 10u over u cubed plus 25 over u cubed. This is du. Here's what we get. We're going to integrate 1 over u minus 10, 1 over u squared, and let's go back here. We have to put our du. But we're, let's just simplify first. You get two, 10 over u squared plus 25 over u cubed. And that's du. So let's make sure here we haven't made any mistake. So we have u is x plus 5. OK, that's cubed down there, u cubed x squared. OK, we square this. Looks like we're good. And so by properties of integration here, we're going to have 1 over u du minus 10, 1 over u squared du plus 25, 1 over u cubed du. So we have three integrals to perform. Now I want you guys to notice something here. Let's know. To integrate 1 over u du, we've been relying on the integral of 1 over x dx, which is equal to x to the minus 1 power dx. Now I want you guys to consider this. By the power rule, this actually can't be applied because we can never have a power here with the power rule, if you remember. Negative 1 is not allowed. And so you have here a negative 1 power. Now here's why this is al uh, not allowed, in case you guys forgot, that if I try to add 1 here, negative 1 plus 1 plus that c, we get x to the 0 over 0, and we could never define, we can never divide by 0. It's not defined here. So this is undefined. We don't divide by 0. However, in our future, we're going to be able to actually integrate this. So I want to just say this is really a second calculus course question here. Because this integral here, you're going to have to sign up for math 262, or no, this is known as calculus 2. So this is an advertisement for the second calc for the second calculus course. You're going to have to sign up for that course. Now, I just want to say to you guys, I can give you the answer now for that integral in calculus 2. You're going to find that this is really the natural log absolute value of u plus c. And so all together, you'll have natural log absolute value of u minus 10 u to the minus 1 over minus 1 plus 25 u to the minus 2 over minus 2 plus c because what I just did here was write this as u to the minus 2 u to the minus 3 up here and we use the power rule natural log absolute value of u plus 10 over u minus 25 halves or 25 over 2u squared and that's plus c. So let's double check. Minus a minus does make that a plus. Positive divided by a negative makes that a negative and then what was u to begin with? u was simply x plus 5 here. Okay, so we can write our answer here. Natural log, absolute value of x plus 5, plus 10 over x plus 5, minus 25 over 2 times x plus 5 squared, plus some constant c. And you're done. So this is really a calculus 2 question. And that, that question would have ended up in a Calculus 2 class. But anyway, 
There's some advertisement. Let's try this question. U here, remember, is in that parentheses. Here's my U. So step one is that U equals 4 minus X cubed. Step two is du dx is minus 3x squared. Because remember, we have to differentiate. You differentiate 4 minus x cubed, which is minus 3x squared. And that's my du dx. So step three, we solve for dx. We get du dx is minus 3x squared over 1. Solving for dx, I should say, we cross multiply. So you get du is minus 3x squared dx. We're going to divide both sides by minus 3x squared. And you get cancellation. So you have du over minus 3x squared becomes our dx. Here's our dx. We replace this dx now with du over minus 3x squared. So the integral will be 6x squared u to the fourth du over minus 3x squared. And sure enough, we get our cancellation. We have 6 divided by negative 3, and you get negative 2 as that constant that you pull out. And we have u to the fourth du. So now by power rule, we get u to the fifth over fifth, fifth power, or 5. And this gives us a negative 2 fifths u to the fifth, plus c. So go back and recall what is u to begin with. It's this 4 minus x cubed. So we're going to replace this u with a 4 minus x cubed. And we end up with negative 2 fifths, 4 minus x cubed to the fifth power, plus c. And there you go. So it's a straightforward u substitution question without really any algebraic manipulation. And then take a look at this question here, number 27. It looks like a pretty good question. We're going to go with what we've been doing. We've been using u to be what's in our parentheses for u substitution here, and we have two sets. So now in this case, I'm going to try this to be our u. And you say, why? Because then I'll have u to a power here of the 12th power there. So we're going to start with u being x cubed plus 1. Here's that u. du dx is 3x squared. And then, step 3, we're going to solve for x. Sorry, dx. So we're going to set this du. dx equal to 3x squared over 1. So we're going to cross multiply. And I'll get du equal to 3x squared dx. Well, divide both sides by 3x squared. We end up with du over 3x squared is dx. Here's my dx. Replace that with du over 3x squared. So let's make this a little clearer here. So we have the integral of x to the fifth plus 4x squared 
times that u to the 12th power. This is what we're looking at here. And we have du is 3x squared. Now notice here, we got some terms left in terms of x. This has to be in terms of u. So let's see how we can simplify these terms here. Let's see what we get. x to the fifth plus 4x squared divided by that 3x squared times u to, the, u to the 12th there, du. Let's see what we end up with here. So using some algebra, we distribute this 3x squared. And these are threes here. So I'm going to simplify now. And using algebra here, notice we have x squared, and then that's going to be a third power. x squared and x squared's gone. So you end up now with one-third x cubed plus four-thirds, and that's u to the twelfth power to you. So remember, we have a term here, x to the third power. So we're going to have to go back to our original u, and we notice we have an x to the third power here. So using this, since we know u is x to the third power minus 1, subtract your 1, you get u minus 1 is x to that third power. That's what we replace our x to the third power with. So you have an integral of 1 third u minus 1 plus 4 thirds here. And don't forget that's u to the 12th power. So I'm going to integrate 1 third u minus 1 third plus 4 thirds u to the 12th. So just doing some arithmetic, I get 1 third u. Negative 1 third plus 4 thirds is 3 thirds, which is really plus 1. And this whole thing is multiplied by u to the 12th. So now we get to distribute here. And we'll end up with 1 third u to the 13th plus u to the 12th du. So by properties of integrals, we have 1 third u to the 13th du plus the integral of u to the 12th du. So we have two integrals here. You get 1 third u to the 14th over 14 plus 1 over 13, or I should say, let's do it this way, u to the 13 over 13 plus that c. And now we have 1 over 3 times 14 is going to be, looks like it's going to be what, 12, is that 42? u to the 14th power plus 1 over 13 u to the 13th power plus that c. So let's go back and recall what was u to begin with. u was x cubed plus 1. It's right here. So I get to replace this u with x cubed plus 1 here and here. Here's our final answer. 1 over 42, x cubed plus 1, plus 1 over 13, x cubed plus 1 to the 13th power, plus that constant. And you're done. So that was an interesting question. Next question. 
we notice we have a parentheses to a power. So what we've seen here is this is going to be our u here. That u will be x squared minus 1. Here's my u. Don't forget you have here a power here. It's three halves. So the second step is going to be du dx will be 2x. We're going to have to solve for dx. So this is 2x over 1. Cross multiply. So 1 times du is du, and 2x times dx is dx. We haven't solved for dx. Divide both sides by the 2x. We get du over 2x is dx. I replace my dx here with du over 2x. So that's du over 2x now. So let's see what we have. Don't forget, you have an x cubed term there. But you have u to the 3 halves now with du over 2x. So doing some algebra here, properties of exponents, this x cancels. I now have a power 2. Don't forget you have a constant here that we can pull out. So this is equal to 1 half the integral of x squared u to the 3 halves du. Don't forget we have x squared here. So you have to go back to the original u here and replace that x squared with what it's equivalent to in terms of u. I have an x squared there. So since u is x squared minus 1, I can find that u plus 1 is x squared. That's what we replace our x squared with. So we get 1 half integral of u plus 1 times u to the 3 halves du. So again, by some algebra, we get 1 half u to the first power times u to the 3 halves plus 1 times u to the 3 halves, and this will be du because we're going to distribute. So you end up with now 1 half integral. This is the first power. So 1 plus 3 halves will give you 5 halves plus u to the 3 halves du. So by properties of integrals, here's what you get. 1 half u to the 5 halves du plus 1 half u to the 3 halves du. Integral of a sum is sum of integrals, but you still have the constant outside. So now we have two integrals here to perform. Now just add 1 to 5 halves, and that'll give you 7 halves. Power rule again. Add 1 to 3 halves, and that'll give you 5 halves plus your constant. So if you remember that, you are dividing by a fraction. You multiply by that reciprocal. Choose cancel. One seventh u to the seven halves plus one fifth u to the five halves plus c. Now remember here we we're going to have some radicals, so what you can do is write that as a mixed number here. So that's 3 and 1 half, and that's 2 and 1 half. So you're going to have here u to the third power, u to the 1 half, 
plus one-fifth u squared u to the one-half plus c. So at this point, you get to go back and look at what u was. It's x squared minus 1. So I get to replace my u here. We'll put it here. u is x squared plus 1. Let's emphasize this. So our final answer will look like this. One seventh x squared minus 1 cubed square root of x squared minus 1 plus 1 fifth x squared minus 1 square root of x squared minus 1 plus the constant c. And don't forget you have a power 2 here. We forgot to write that down. So this is how you integrate here. Twenty-nine. Notice twenty-nine here. We have a lower limit, and we have an upper limit. And the instructions are simply to use a change of variables substitution. Well, this is u sub. This is what we've been doing. But again, this time you have what's called a definite integral. So we're going to need to change the limit values. U again here is what's under the radical. It's x plus 3. So step 1, we let u be x plus 3. Step 2, differentiate u with respect to x. We get 1. Step 3, We cross multiply. You get du is dx for step three. Now, when we substitute here, this is my du. We'll get an integral that looks like this. u to the one half du. But remember, my limits are here. x is one and x is six. So you can say, can I keep those limits? Well, not exactly. We have to convert these x values to u values. And so you're going to have to go back to your first step here where u is x plus 3. So replace x with 1, and we get u to be 1 plus 3. Or we can say u here will be 4. That's our new lower limit value. For the upper limit value, we replace x with 6. So we now have 6 plus 3, which is 9. So u here will be 9. So what I have now here is u to the 1 half du with new limit values. u is 4 and u is 9. So we do have to convert the limits as well. So everything's good now. It's all in terms of u. Our limits, du, and the function. So by the power rule, we add 1 half to 1. We end up with u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, where u is 4 and u is 9. So remember, f of 9 minus f of 4, this antiderivative function by the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, we're going to have 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, which is evaluated from u to 4, and u is 9, so we get 2 thirds 9 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds 4 to the 3 halves. So we have two values here. We have to determine here is 9 to the 3 halves and 4 to the 3 halves. So 9 to the 3 halves here is going to be written as, let's focus on this, 
9 to the 1 half raised to the third power. The square root of 9 raised to the third power are 3 cubed, which is 27. 4 to the 3 halves is 4 to the 1 half cube, which is the square root of 4 cube, which is 2 cube, which is 8. So this value here is 27, and this is 8. So we end up with here 2 thirds times 27 minus 2 thirds times 8. So 27 divided by 3 here is 9, and we can't divide 3 with 8, or 8 with 3. 2 times 9 is 18, minus 16 thirds. So we have to subtract here. So we're going to multiply the top by 3, the bottom by 3, so we can obtain like fractions. And 3 times 18 is 54 divided by 3, which is 16 divided by 3. So we're going to do our arithmetic. 54 minus 16 is going to be 28. 28 over 3. And this is how we handle a definite integral with u substitution. So just go back and remember, the important thing to do here is, yes, it's a change of variables, but you have been changing your variables from x to u, but this time you have to remember you do that with your upper and lower limits as well. Number 30, another indefinite integral, or I should say definite integral. Let's write this down. Lower limit, upper limit, it's a definite integral. Let's do our u substitution. We've been replacing what's in our parentheses with u. So u is x squared plus 1. Second step is going to say, find du dx. So I differentiate u with respect to x, and I get 2x. Step 3, solve for dx. Use your cross multiplication here. So I end up with du is 2x dx, divide both sides by 2x, and you get du over 2x is equal to dx. So here's my dx that I replace in my integral. So we have du over 2x, and so I'm going to get the integral from x is 0 to x is 1, x over, that was our u, and I have du over 2x. So don't forget now, your x's cancel, and we have a constant. So this is 1 half, x is 0, x is 1, 1 over u cubed du. Now remember, we have to have our limits in terms of u and not x. So we go back to the original. u is x squared plus 1. So if x is 0, plug in that 0 here. So we get u is 0 squared plus 1, and 0 squared plus 1 here means that u is going to be 1. x is 1 now, the upper limit. So I get to replace x with 1 now, and so u becomes 1 squared plus 1, which will be 1 plus 1. u here is 2. So we now have our limits here in terms of u now, and we can use the power rule to integrate.
1 half e to the minus 2 over minus 2 evaluated from u is 1 to u is 2 we get negative 1 over 4 u squared u is 1 to u is 2 because remember you're going to have to multiply the denominators together so we get negative 1 over 4 2 squared minus a negative 1 over 4 times 1 squared. Negative 1 over 16 plus 1 over 4. Because don't forget minus a minus, but before that, recall you had a negative sign for your antiderivative. So the negative sign is here and here. This is f of 2 minus f of 1. You take the difference. So we're all okay. So this becomes 1 fourth minus 1 sixteenth subtracting unlike fractions. Multiply the bottom times 4 and the top times 4. 4 sixteenths minus 1 sixteenth the answer is 3 sixteenths and you're done number 31 another definite integral with u substitution so we've been letting what's under the radical here sorry under your parentheses or inside the parentheses be our u so we're gonna let this be u so u is gonna be 2x sorry x squared plus 6x plus 1 this is our u the second step is du dx becomes the derivative of x squared plus 6x plus 1, which is 2x plus our 6. So du dx is 2x plus 6. Step 3, du dx is 2x plus 6 over 1. I just cross multiply. So I'll get du is 2x plus 6 dx. Divide both sides by 2x plus 6. Cancellation. So du over 2x plus 6 becomes dx. Replace this dx with what we found, du over 2x plus 6. So here's my integral. I get the integral from x is 1 to x is 2, 4x plus 12 over u squared, du over 2x plus 6. Now a couple of things here. We're going to need to change our limit values. This is x is 1. So when I plug in 1 here for x, here's what we get. u is 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 1 1 plus 6 plus 1, u is 8. So this gets changed to 8. You do the same now with x is 2. Plug in a 2 for x. u is 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 1, 
4 plus 12 plus 1, u is 17. These are my, my new limits here. u is 8, u is 17. So I have here the integral from 8 to 17, 4x plus 12, over u squared, times du over 2x plus 6. Now if you notice here, we can factor out a 4. So this becomes 4 times x plus 3. And here, we can factor out a 2. This is 2 times x plus 3. So we get to integrate from 8 to 17, 4 times x plus 3 over u squared times du over 2 times x plus 3. We get cancellation here, and we get division of 4 with 2 to be 2, 8, 17, 2 over u squared du. So don't forget, we have a constant we can pull out. You get 2, 8 to 17, 1 over u squared du, 2, 8 to 17, u to the minus 2 du. Power rule. Add 1 to negative 2. So we're going to get here negative 1 over 2u. u is 8. u is 17. So we're going to have to evaluate f of 17 minus f of 8, which is minus 1 over 2 times 17 minus 1 over that negative 2 times 8. Because, be careful. Fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 says we subtract the antiderivatives. The antiderivative function has a negative sign here and here. So we get negative 1 over 34 plus 1 over 16, which is 1 over 16 minus 1 over 34. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have to subtract two fractions here. Now, what I'm going to do is a shortcut technique. So I'm going to have 1 times 34, which is 34. Let's write this down. Thirty-four is a numerator, minus sixteen over sixteen times thirty-four, and that's five forty-four. Okay, so we know thirty-four minus sixteen now is eighteen. And so when we reduce this fraction here, um, they're both divisible by 2. So you have 9 over, and you have 544 divided by 2, gives you 272. Now, we can't divide 272 with 9. We're going to get actually a remainder here. So this is your reduced fraction as an answer. 9 over 272. But I want to go back over here in case you guys forgot the shortcut here. If I have two fractions, a over b minus c over d, we can actually do this special type of cross multiplication. This is ad minus bc over bd. So this is what I did here to subtract our fractions.
Okay, number 32. We're going to let u be what's under the radical. So u is sine x plus 1, and that's our first step. Second step, the derivative of sine x plus 1 is cosine. Third step, solve for dx. Cross multiply. We get du equal to cosine x dx. Divide both sides by cosine. So we get du over cosine x is dx. So you cancel. And replace this dx up here with dx. And remember, u is sine x plus 1. So let's get that the right color here. OK. We're going to integrate from x is negative pi over 2 x is pi over 2. We have cosine here over the square root of u, and our dx is du over cosine. So you're going to have your cosines cancel. But don't forget, we have to change our limits. This bottom limit here is x is negative pi over 2. The top is x is pi over 2. So you have to go back to your original u. u is sine x plus 1. So since u is sine x plus 1, you're going to replace, let's look at for the lower limit first, I guess. Put a negative pi over 2 here. So you become sine of negative pi over 2 plus 1. Sine of negative pi over 2, well, that's a 90 degree angle. And it's negative 90. So this value is negative 1. So for you, negative 1 plus 1 is positive 0. I'm sorry, not positive 0. There's no such thing. U is actually 0 because we're looking at this. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Now similarly, for the upper limit, you assign plus 1 for the upper limit now. We're going to replace x with pi over 2. So we get now the upper limit value. You assign of 90 degrees plus 1. So what's sine of 90 degrees? 1. So in this case, your upper limit now is going to be 1 plus 1, or we say u here is 2. So we're going to have here u being 2. And I guess that's in purple. Okay, so our, our limits now are 0 to 2, so here's your integral. 0, 2, one over the square root of u, du, which is one over u to the one half du u to the minus one half du. So this becomes negative one half plus one is going to be one half over one half. Evaluate that from u is zero to u is two. 
which is 2. u to the 1 half, u is 0, u is 2. 2 square root of u from 0 to 2. Plug in your limits because this is f of 2 minus f of 0, which is 2 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 0. And that's 0. Final answer is going to be 2 square root of 2. There you go. And at this point, I got to get to another class, so I'm going to call it a day at this question. You guys can finish the rest of these, 33, 34, and so on, and you can have some fun here.